Do you suffer from the debilitating symptoms of chronic pain, swelling, and loss of joint motion due to arthritis? Are you taking drugs like Celebrex and Vioxx or other super aspirin prescriptions? If you are, you're increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke by up to 50%. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, host of Dr. Tom Rosell Live Sundays at 12 noon. Why live with pain or the dangerous side effects of drugs when the doctors at the Rosell Center for Healing practicing 21st century integrative medicine can help you experience relief like never before? Simple, safe, chiropractic, acupuncture, and nutritional care can provide significant relief from arthritic pain in less than six weeks. More than 70% of our patients experience a return to life far beyond their expectations. Give yourself the best gift possible, freedom from arthritic pain, naturally. Call today to schedule an appointment. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Yep, live in studio, waiting for your phone calls. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you on any subject that you have in mind, regardless of what it is. I'm sure that you've tried, you've applied. You know, you've chased the tail, so to speak, and try to come up with a remedy that will fix it. Well, you've come up with the same old, same old, really nothing that's worked. Well, here's your opportunity. Talk to us. We'll see what we can do to make a difference for you. 888-630-9625. We're going to talk about a very interesting topic today, herbal medicine. It's thousands of years old before even recorded history, and the applications are not new. So we're going to try to put a light on the subject, and to help me do that is an old tried-and-true person, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Stephanie Pina, <laughs> acupuncturist, naturopath. Dr. Pina, welcome again. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, of course, I know. But it is Sunday, and you know there's things, but we'll let those slide. So having said that, this topic is one that kind of breaches the years. It, it goes uh, for not only decades and centuries, but thousands of years. And we have many different forms of application, from Ayurvedic medicine to traditional Chinese medicine to Tibetan medicine, and the list really goes on. And even our own culture here in this country, going back to Indian lore. And, you know, we talk about Eastern herbs and Western herbs, but there's far more than that. But these applications are profound, and we also know that the majority of medications that we use today, for the most part, across the board are extracts, if you will, of very powerful herbal remedies that can do all kinds of things. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. No matter what culture and civilization or what time um, history you look at, they've been using herbal medicine as really the basis of any kind of medicine. That and applications like hot and cold, whatever they had available to them. Um, and some of those same herbs that were used thousands of years ago and you know got more attention hundreds of years ago are now currently the, the t herbs of interest. They're the ones that are the baselines for some of these uh, medications that we see kind of coming onto the markets. They're actually breaking down the herbs to their active components to basically come up with better ideas to make pharmaceuticals because they see that there's something that works. They just want to pick out the one individual component. And unfortunately, it takes away from the rest of what the, the plant might be doing, too. You know, I come from, as everybody knows, because I talk about it all the time, I come from a, a traditional Sicilian culture. And Sicily is kind of an interesting place because to control the Mediterranean, you had to control Sicily. So it's, it's not just an Italian culture. It is a, a Norwegian culture. It's a Spanish culture. It's a uh, Middle Eastern culture. Everybody that took over that area. So you see many different forms. But what's also interesting in that area, whether, by the way, whether it's Sicily or Cyprus or Crete and so forth, the same, same axiom kind of takes place here, is that when these people had a sickness, they had an illness, they had pain, they had whatever it was, they looked to not medicine, they looked to herbology. And you and I were talking on the way up. That whole area, that was the melting pot of exploration when it comes to the to the knowledge of uh, herbal medicine. Matter of fact, it started in the Middle East. It started with the uh, the cultures of uh, Iraq and particularly in Baghdad. That was the center of learning of of herbs and and. Uh, the teaching of physicians, going back to the ninth century, that far back, as far as a formal 
interactive. They were brilliant. They, they had more things. And unfortunately, because of war and transitions of civilization, so much of that was lost in the initial stages. And there's almost like a renaissance going on now this, this last century. Yeah, it's amazing because also during that time, you know, whether they, you know, one country was exploring, another one was taking over, or you had pest and plague and, um, you know, everything from famine people had to look around to see what was available to them. And as these newer peoples and populations started to come through different areas, they were exposed to the same thing that they were carrying them because most of the time people would bring their medicines with them. So you start getting exposures of, you know, some of the Eastern medicines from the areas you mentioned, you know, into more areas of China. You start seeing Chinese medicines moving into Japan. You start seeing them bringing it over to, to here. It's always been interesting because certain herbs will pop up at certain areas where they really don't grow well, but essentially they can be used medicinally, and then they get put into uh, combination herbs that do grow well. So there's always been this m- influence of culture on the way herbs have been used, what's been medicine at the time, and then what's been available to the people at the time, too. You know, everybody talks about Marco Polo having traveled to China and bringing back pasta, and it was rice pasta, but nevertheless, what he also, and we don't talk about because we don't get into the science part of it, he brought back a whole host, a treasure of eastern herbs, both from not only China, but also from India. And to today, that was the standardization of a lot of the study that was going on. But we're going to get into We're going to talk a little bit about blood pressure problems and heart disease and, and pain patterns and how these herbs work. This Tuesday evening, the 21st, and we shifted the in-house continuing education program for this week. This uh, when, or Tuesday evening, the 21st at 7.30 p.m., Dr. Pina will be your presenter, your host, at the Rizal Center for Healing. What is she going to talk about? Obviously, herbal medicine. So if you're on different types of medications, if you're on uh, different types of painkillers or blood pressure regulators or heart problems or diabetic problems, and you'd like to know if there's something else that you can do besides prescription medications, or you'd just like to know how this stuff works so you can help yourself, so you can have your own little... Uh, drawer of quick acting homeopathics and herbal medicine this is a night that you really don't want to miss they are amazing i mean i grew up and many of us did with our grandmothers and our mothers telling us you know oh you don't feel good here take this code this is the extract of olive oil this is the extract of garlic this is the extract of oregano and they all had very specific medicinal applications that were profound in the body and actually worked well, the amazing thing is when, when you even think about those ones, the, you know, the grandmother's cure and remedy, a lot of that came just from observation. You know, they didn't need the clinical sciences and the trials and the, uh, you know, all the, they had the years of experience that was passed down from one to the other. And they, they saw when someone, you know, was getting a cold, they would, they would boost their garlic levels. They would have them eat a bunch. They would even, even down to the chicken soup, they would see that it helps, you know, nourish the immune system. So a lot of these times, you know, we talk all about clinical trials and how, you know, you prove it to me how this herb works. We want to know how this works, how that works, what's the active ingredient. But everything that got passed down from history got built on and built on. And now you can look at some of these older herbs like blue which is a Chinese herb that's used in major liver studies. And they can actually tell you what's the ingredient, what's it being, what's it doing in the body, how is it affecting different liver enzymes. But here's the problem, and you and I talked about that on the way up today. The problem is, is that medicine is starting to embrace herbology, if you will, but they're trying to isolate the the active ingredient. Mm -hmm. And they take that out, and then what they're finding is that that active ingredient has a powerful impact. But now, because it's been released from all of its surrounding cofactors, if you will, the natural vibration of the plant itself, now you've got side effects, and you, you can't control the impact. And they don't get that. They don't understand that it doesn't work as it works in nature, and that's the key. And that's the thing that we all have to realize, that the herb, the plant itself, has a vibrational aspect, has a uh, impact with many different other ingredients, not just the one little piece that they isolate. For example, acid, or excuse me, salicylic acid and um, uh, and, and aspirin and, yeah. and willow bark. That's right. So, yeah, it's it's very interesting, and it's kind of funny because the plants themselves know a little bit better than we do because they say, "Hey, just use me all together, and we'll be great." Because essentially, what's happening is they have those ingredients in them for a reason. Some of those acids are there to help them, you know, stay alive to pe- keep animals away. A lot of the times, like with white willow bark and, and some of the ones that attract animals to it, it's to help populate their own species to get them from one area to the other, um, as like just like with bees pollinating flowers. So they they combine some of these. Green 
great medicinal benefits in the herbs themselves, but then there's usually another component in there that's balancing out at the same time. So that balances either in plants. So if something's more toxic in nature, there's usually going to be something that balances out at the same time. And that's what we lose when we just look at that individual ingredient. I don't know how many years ago that I saw a movie, and it was Sean Connery was uh, the lead in it, and it was in the middle of, of South America, and he... You know, he went down. You remember that movie? Yep. And he, he went to uh, explore. Medicine Man. Medicine Man. That was it. Thank <laughs> you. I, was, I figured if I talked about it long enough, the, the name would come up. But, you know, he went down there, and the whole crux of the thing was that he saw the application of herbal medicine. He was the guy that had to be proven, too. You know, he wanted to take the extract. He want, And then he found, as it went through, that he couldn't take the extract. He had to use the entire plant, and that's what worked. Mm-hmm. And it, it was incredible. Well, the other thing I remember about that movie, hopefully we're not giving it away from anyone who really wants to see the movie, are, mm. <laughs> is that they also found out, you know, he did all these laboratory experiments in the middle of the jungle and to try to find that extra because they knew exactly what they had to find and he kept missing, kept missing. But he realized that it actually involved the environment because the tree that he ended up getting that extract from was also the host of a bunch of an, um, ants. And that's the right. ant had that's something right. to do with the activation of the actual medicinal medicine. So every time he would just use the plant, it wouldn't come up. Now but get, then as soon as he had a mistake or away. something, it came up. That's right. But now you gave the story away. They won't remember the ant, do That's right. Go, go to Medi- <laughs> Medicine Man and watch it. Uh, you'll get a, a tremendous eye-opening realization. 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. Let's talk about your drugs and the trade-offs, the things that you can do without taking those for the rest of your life because there's so many things that you can use instead of this one or this Tuesday, Tuesday evening, May the 21st, 7.30 p.m. Dr. Stephanie Pina will be your host, your presenter at the Rizal Center for Healing in Fairfax, Virginia. If you'd like to attend that presentation and learn and really, really learn, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff that you'd like to attend Dr. Stephanie Pina's presentation this Tuesday, May the 21st, 7.30 p.m. She's going to be talking about herbal medicine and its application and its historical background and why it's so less expensive, if you will, and then uh, different pharmaceuticals. But you've got to have somebody that knows what they're talking about, and this lady knows what she's talking about. October the 19th, what's that? Ageless Health 2013. It's a day that will knock your socks off. It's a day that will give you all the tools, all the ability, all the information that you need to change your life the very next day. I promise you that. We've been doing this now for over 13 years in different formats and so forth, and every year we change the the presentation. We give you more data. Ageless Health 2013, October 19th, the three keys to health and wellness. And I promise you, you're going to have data. And the end of this week, the end of this week in May, you'll be able to go to our website at rosellecare.com or drtomrosell.com, and you'll see all the information for registration. Don't miss this event. Those of you who've been in the past know that this is uh, an overload of information. I mean, you're going to walk away with stuff, but we're going to change the format a little bit this year. We're also going to give you the opportunity at different levels of participation to be able to consult there with one of our docs. We're also going to show you more hands-on information shifting a little bit for you and then we're developing another program for you but we'll tell you about that after this one's over so for right now ages health 2013 the three keys to health and wellness october the 19th at the fairview park marriott hotel and we'll give you all that data this week so go to dr tom rosell d-r-t-o-m-r-o-s-e-l-l-e.com or go to rosellcare.com at the end of this week and you'll find information specifically so you can register and you can get going on this thing we want you there remember like every year we sell out completely we hit our limit that's it you're going to have an organic lunch you can have a lot of presentations that's all part of your ticket so don't forget that date right now 888-630-9625 and my guest today in studio your host this tuesday evening may 21st dr stephanie pina dr pina is a naturopath she's an herbalist she is an acupuncturist she knows the stuff. She knows it really well. So if you have any problems with cardiac problems or blood sugar handling or uh, any kind of ailment that you're taking medications for an extended period of time, this is your opportunity to find out what the differentiations are and what you can possibly do to make a huge difference in your health. Trust me, you don't want to miss you know, uh, checking her brain out because it's amazing what she comes up with and the information that she's going to give to you. We're coming up to a break because we have to be respectful to the people who uh, bring you Dr. Tom Rizal, so don't go away. We'll be right back. 
This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is, a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest x-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are in studio. You can call me at 888-630-9625. That's 888 9625 Love to talk to you. Any subject that you have in mind, we have a fix for. At least we can put you in the right direction and get you to think about it maybe a little differently. We're talking about herbal medicine today and all of those things that have to do with nature's grand potpourri of things that fix you. Because, you know, our creator put things here for us. It's there. Everything is in a perfect order, perfect balance. We're the ones that mess it up. We, you know, through our our activities of injury and, and the biochemistry that we alter in our body, you know, things we, we shouldn't, things that we shouldn't, or that we need more of, that we don't put into our body well enough. Well, and the stress patterns. All of you living in Washington, D.C., metropolitan area, know that stress is part of your day-to-day life in many, many different forms. But nature, as it is, has produced this huge abundance of things that can fix you, and we ignore that. In studio today, Dr. Stephanie Pina. Your host this Tuesday evening, May the 21st, 7.30 p.m. at the Roselle Center for Healing. We're going to be talking about herbal medicine and the history of it, but also the application of it. You can be our guest. We'd love to have you. There's no cost. All you need to do is make a reservation. How do you do that? 703-698-7117. 703-698-7117. And tell my staff that you'd like to attend this Tuesday's presentation at the Brazil Center for Healing in Fairfax, 7.30 p.m. Dr. Stephanie Pina will be your host. Dr. Pina, I want to talk about a, a couple quick, interesting things, you know, just from our point of view. And we're going to keep other things except for herbs out of this for right now. But when people suffer from different types of heart conditions, particularly things like atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter and heart failure and so forth, There's a drug that's been used forever. It's called uh, digoxin. And the thing that is, digoxin comes from a very specific plant called foxglove. And it's very powerful, and it works even better. Yeah, what's interesting about foxglove, too, is that you typically will see it used across the board in a couple of different, uh, you know, Ayurvedic medicine kind of has a version of it. Um, Chinese medicine has a version of it. And every time they've looked at it, you know, not knowing all the individual ingredients, it's always seen as a blood tonic. So basically what it's done is it's gone in there and moved the blood, kept the blood circulating, whether that was in the big vessels or in the smaller vessels. So the effects on the heart that it have, and after they found the individual ingredients, the didoshin itself, and they really started to focus on it, they were able to kind of say, let's use it for one specific cardiovascular purpose. But there's a lot of different applications of foxglove as well, too. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge drug. And the one that I've, I've used over the years in conjunction with foxglove is Hawthorne berry extract. It, it has a huge impact on the system. Yeah, and it's, it's also, a, uh, we think of it in Western medicine uh, as far as this cardiovascular concern, uh, effects and the way it can help vasodilation and control vasal stimulation. And um, in Chinese medicine, what's interesting is it actually uses a stomach tonic. So it's actually used to help break down food. So it's kind of this idea that something that's in the food that we eat and the digestion is actually affecting our circulation. 
Um, we've seen that in other areas where it had to affect uh, cholesterol, but uh, definitely used uh, in different areas of parts of plants as well as, to, as used for different things. Now, the interesting thing with all of these herbal remedies is that they do have side effects and there are things that you can't use at certain times. So you have to know somebody and go to somebody who really has the capacity to put these things together, like Dr. Pina, and you know she knows how to monitor this stuff. We've used them in our practice. I've been in practice, as many of you know, for 37 years, and I've used herbs forever. Now, do they work across the board? There are combinations that work. Do they work in advanced cases? There's some things that you have to use when we're talking about cardiovascular disease that are more a chelator type Mm -hmm. and being able to pull those out. Uh, Cayenne pepper is one of the things that that is used in case of emergencies, but it's also one that vasodilates like niacin. Yeah, and it also has a great effect too where essentially it's a um, rubidose stimulant. So that's where a lot of people have basically run into cayenne as a medicinal one through the uh, caps and cream that they've used to rub over joints and stuff too. But it's a different ingredient that's part of that. I mean, that was supposed to keep animals away, and now we're using it medicinally to kind of help uh, with joint inflammation and getting blood flow to the area as well. You know, we got a minute, but one of the things that uh, you know is a big deal now in uh, all the, the the natural companies and so forth, and they're, they're talking about all the extracts that are coming from grapes and, and grape juice. And it, what we don't understand, and we'll talk about that herbal preparation and the, that extract when we come back after the news, but it's extremely powerful in actually saving the tissue from oxidative destruction and breakdown, not only reversing the aging process. Some of you know what I'm talking about already, but I'm not going to tell you until we come back from the news. But it's it's an important product, and it's one that we can get in many different ways other than drinking a glass of wine every night because that's probably one of the, even though that it's there, it's one of the lesser contents of that situation. Herbal medicine is fantastic. It is a piece of our practice that we couldn't do without. It's one that you have to understand intimately. It is uh, one of these things that you can substitute some of the drugs that you're taking now. When we come back from the news, we're going to get a little bit more intimate and familiar with that. And if you have a call, 888-630-9625. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live, and we are in studio. 888-630-9625, 888-630-9625. We have several calls, and we want to talk to that, but when we get back from a call or two, we're going to talk about resveratrol, which I kind of teased you with before the break, but a very, very important application. But let's go to the phones. Tom from Annandale, how can we help you, sir? Hello, doctor. Um, my question is... Uh can herbal remedies be used to successfully treat symptoms from Parkinson's disease? Tom, let me tell you a story. And then the short answer is yes, by the way. My, when I was in the clinic many moons ago and I was doing my internship, my first patient uh, of any severe type of uh, presentation was a Parkinson's patient. And the poor guy was in pretty bad shape. And in those days, you know, as my son would say, before the dinosaurs ro- uh, ruled the world, uh, I didn't know what I knew today, but even still, I had acupuncture and I had some herbs at my disposal, and the effect with this gentleman was quite significant. But having said that, the bottom line is, yes, there's much that can be done. There is. um, There's a number of different herbs, and you you can find some of this information and. The stuff that's put out on the Internet on this stuff, too, is kind of very vague because they're giving you a vague idea of... um, how it would help with uh, Parkinson's disease, but remember too that this has uh, got multiple symptoms to it. You know, we we always think of maybe some of the the neurological systems of Parkinson's disease, but we also have to think about what's going on in the gut too. And you have to make sure that when you're using herbs that are probably going to be in a stronger dose over a longer period of time to treat this, that you want to make sure that the digestive system is good so they can break down the herbs and get all those active ingredients. But everything from green tea, where you know you have high antioxidant effects, so you're basically kind of helping with Things are almost like the anti-aging part of it to help slow down the process to even things like, you know, ginkgo that's improving blood flow to the brain and even things that are in food sources like different types of oils and from seeds and from plants can kind of help also work as kind of patches to make sure that the, the neurological connections are still working as well, too. 
other herbs do have different components um, that works with the dopamine response, but you also have to think about is those are the herbs able to get into the brain, uh, similar to some maybe in the medications they have now too. Tom, there are traditional things that we've used over a period of time, and we've seen varying results based on the patient and where it comes from. What I've learned and held true over all the years I've been in practice is a patient who's been diagnosed with Parkinson's or a patient who has Alzheimer's or a patient who has any of the neurodegenerative cognitive problems uh, is they're not the same. They're, they, they react to different sources in varied uh, presentations. Uh, one of the things that we, we've found clinically and anecdotally recently in the last several years of using it is a medium-chain triglyceride, which is uh, coconut oil. And it's uh, years ago that you say, no, don't take coconut oil because it's bad for you. It's going to plaque your heart. Well, the opposite is actually true. It opens things up. In a Parkinson's, like Alzheimer's, uh, like an MS patient and so forth, that sometimes heavy metals are involved, and you have to find out if they're there and get rid of the heavy metal detoxification uh, that's uh, within the neurological system and begin to break up the amyloid pra- placking. Um, so, you know, from things like NAC to coenzyme Q10 to very high levels of B12, particularly the hydroxy form of B12. There's three, uh, three forms, by the way. There's a methyl form, there's a, there's a hydroxy form, there's a cyanocobalamide form. And the, the thing of it is, is that you have to take it with adequate amounts of B12, or excuse me, folic acid. How much? Five parts folic acid, two much B12. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of data out, and, but the short answer to your question is, yes, absolutely, things can be done. Uh, you have to understand your problem specifically. You have to understand the onset. So I would encourage you this uh, uh, Tuesday evening, if you have the opportunity, you're close to our office, come on by, let us talk to you. We'll be more than happy to give you more specific detail and ask you more specific uh, questions about your condition. Okay, thank you very much. Tom, thank you very much. Lorraine, how can we help you? Thank you for calling. Oh, thank you both for bringing this very important topic to the radio. And, Dr. Pena, before I ask my question, could you be kind enough to consider doing another herbal medicine lecture on maybe Wednesday night, the normal night for lecture? Well, I'll tell you what, Lorraine, what the problem is this week, we double-scheduled ourselves. Right. And right. that's why we had to flip it to Tuesday night. Otherwise, we're out of sequence because we try to do them every other week. Well, so. I mean, maybe later on in the year. You yeah. Know, if you could but do you know again. what? Here's the deal, because this is going to be taped. It's going to be videoed, and you can go to drtomresult.com probably in about a month or so, and you'll be able to see it online. And we rent these things like really cheap. It's like what four bucks, you know, and you can see the whole presentation. So you can do it in the in the uh, privacy of your own home. We don't do it the same week or within two three weeks, but we post all of our in-house continuing education programs online. Well, that's wonderful. And then maybe later on, after the summer or fall, you could do the lecture again. You know, for people who it'll come up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it'll you know. come. Lorraine, how can Actually, what's, what's well, really I, interesting before I forget is the one I did last year is actually up there as well, too. And we did a lot of kind of play with how to use, uh, how to prepare some of the herbs as well, too. So um, that one should already be up there. Oh, cool. Well, that's that's wonderful. And in, and in the meantime, for the allergy sufferers who, you know, from the pollen and the grass and and other uh, elements in the nature that get uh, the inflammation There's in their sinuses during allergy season and migraines. What do you recommend, Dr. Pena, to keep uh, headaches away uh, and also uh, reduce inflammation in the sinuses? We'll answer your question, Lorraine. Thank you for calling. Well, I think it's kind of interesting. There's a number of different things out there, and you we had talked before also about trying to figure out exactly what's causing the inflammation to begin with. Is it just the, the the pollens out there? Is it the rain that's affecting the molds out there? There's a number of different things that can cause that inflammation in the sinuses, even improper blood flow to the head coming from, you know, misalignment in the spine can do that as well too, especially with the migraine comport, uh, component of that. You know, different herbs that you can use to kind of open up the sinuses can come down to anything that's kind of basically regulating the histamine control, which can be like your stinging nettles. Um, It can be also things that are going to help decrease mucus inflammation and swelling down to using golden seal. Um, Also using things like euphrasia. Um, are, which is basically like eye bright. So that's kind of affecting more of the symptoms that are getting into also the, the itchy eyes, the, the swelling eyes and stuff. People have different responses. So you also want to make sure that you're eliminating as much factors out of there as you possibly can to see where that inflammation is coming from. And then also trying to heal the gut too, to make sure that they're not bringing in toxic foods that's even causing some of those reactions to continue as well. You know, interesting thing about, uh, nettles and stinging nettles, it also has a neuroregenerative uh, substance of, of it, and I've used it for patients who've been paralyzed, I've used it for patients who've had acute brain trauma, and depends on how you use it in combination, 
you see some amazing results. Uh, some of them in the literature is anecdotal, but enough of them. And when you say anecdotal, it's because there hasn't been a drug company out there to decide, oh, I don't think we're going to study this, uh, this herb. But it does work extremely, extremely well. So, uh, yes, indeed, there are things that can be done. Well, the, the interesting thing about nettles, too, that I was like, is when I was learning to study about herbs, I was kind of trying to think, okay, it's the herb all, all together. But with the nettles part, the inflammation part really comes, as far as the allergies, out of the actual leaf of it. Um, when you start looking at some of the applications, like especially, you know, you hear a lot about stinging nettles used together with saw palmetto for prostate issues as well, too. That tends to be the root. So even just looking at the herbs kind of making them more sense. The leaves are more exposed to where the pollens are, to more the outside world, where the more deep down organs like the, the prostate gland is exposed more inside of the root, down deep into the earth, too. So even the plant's kind of telling us to use certain parts of me for uh, certain reasons. This, one, or this Tuesday evening, Tuesday, May the 21st, 7.30 p.m., Dr. Stephanie Pina will be your host, your presenter at the Roselle Center for Healing in Fairfax, Virginia. We're in the Red Cross building, right on Route 50 in Prosperity, very close uh, to the exit of the Beltway, so you can get there real easy. And since it's the day, uh, daytime is extending longer, no problem in drive time. So we'd love to have you as our guest, but we do require one thing, a reservation. Can you give us a call at 703-698-7117? That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff that you'd like to attend Dr. Stephanie Pina's presentation this Tuesday, the 21st, 7.30 p.m. Love to have you, and we'll answer all your questions. I'm telling you, this doctor knows her stuff, and she really will get into you and tell you what. You shouldn't be taking that drug. There, there are other things, and did you know about this? Did you know about that? Let's go to the phones. Bob, West Virginia, thank you for calling. How can we help you, sir? Um, well, uh, uh, there are a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. The, the first thing, um, I, I was interested in the coconut oil. I have memory problems, and um, I, I had listened to somebody ask about that on another medical call-in show, and they actually said, well, there's only anecdotal evidence. There's no controlled studies or whatever, so we can't recommend it for you. Um, but the other thing was, um, if I want to get it, I don't know what a source would be. You want to drop in? You want to have me have this one? <laughs> I can tell you one of the interesting things is, uh, as far as the source, I'll take that part. You can take the other part. Okay. <laughs> um, it's kind of interesting. Most of the kind of good health food stores now are going to have a version of it. You obviously want to see if you can get something that's organic, that doesn't have anything that else in it, no added sugars, no processed stuff. Um, the funny thing about coconut oil is that when I used to see it on the shelf, it's one of these kind of substances that can look kind of solid one second and liquid the next second. So a lot of people start to think it's going bad, but that's not necessarily true. So it's definitely a temperature-controlled type of thing. But uh, most of the places around here now have it. Is there any, uh, a way you can get it yourself? Sure there is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bob, let me give you some data on it. First of all, coconut oil is a, it's called an MCT or median chain triglyceride. And what it seems to do is to begin to, one, prevent the degenerative uh, uh, breakdown of neurological substances. It also seems to begin to repair and restore function and enhance the body's own recuperative uh, patterns. This substance cannot hurt you. And, you'll, yes, it's anecdotal. What does that mean? That means, as I said earlier, there's no drug company that has taken it and tried to uh, do the studies because there's no money behind it and the stuff is really cheap and you can get it anywhere and so forth. The one thing that you want to remember is make sure that it's an organic source. And there are many sources out there. You can get Garden of Life, uh, extra, extra virgin olive oil. Uh, you can, or excuse me, see, I'm Sicilian coming out again. Coconut oil. Gerald, J-A-R-R-O-W, has organic uh, coconut oil. Nature's Way has organic coconut oil. And it goes on. There's many other forms. You can go right online and go organic coconut oil, look it up, and you can buy it, and they'll ship it to you. Now, as far as dosages, you're not my patient. So I don't know your history. I don't know the, the nuances, the, the particular situations. So I can't recommend to you. But I can tell you that the nutritional literature out there on very good peer-reviewed journals will tell you that some people have uh, taken it from up to 12 tablespoons to 14 to 15 tablespoons a day in cases of patients who have Alzheimer's. Now, I've used it with patients in many very different dosages. Depends on what their condition is in conjunction with other things. So having said that, Bob, uh, 
the medium chain triglyceride works very, very nicely. Uh, it's part of the puzzle in, in this type of situation. Bipolar cognitive patterns have to do with communication. It has to do with blood sugar regulation. It has to do with the intestinal integrity of the gut. Your, most of your neurochemistry, 80% of your neurochemistry that your brain works on, starts in the intestinal system. So if you have a gut that's not working uh, properly, if you have other types of things that are locked into the system, stopping neurological transmission, you've got to clear those things out first. Anybody that we deal with in our practice that has chronic patterns, we look at those substances and we look at those organ systems and we put them together. Interestingly, but, I do have a gut problem. Ah, see? There you go. So if we can help you, uh, more than happy to. I know you're a bit away. You're in West Virginia, but you know what? It may be worth the drive just to come and say hello and see if we can talk to you. Bob, I really appreciate your call. We're coming up to a break. Uh, you can get a hold of us anytime. Anybody can at drtomrosell.com. Send us a note. We will be more than happy to communicate with you. If you'd like to talk to one of my doctors, we'll get on the phone with you and you know tell you what we think that you should do as your next step. We're not going to diagnose you on the phone, but we'll try to give you as much data as we possibly can. This Wednesday, or Tuesday evening, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday evening, May the 21st, 7.30 p.m., your host, your presenter at the Rizal Center for Healing on Herbal Medicine, Dr. Stephanie Pina. Trust me, you will learn more than you possibly think you can. So give us a call, 703-698-7117. We're coming up to a break, and we have a couple more calls. We're going to try to get to you before the show is over. So don't go away and hold tight. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. Educate. Engage. Empower. Take control of your health with Dr. Tom Roselle and the Roselle Center for Healing. Information is power. Achieve an ultimate state of wellness with Dr. Tom Roselle's Education Lecture Series Video On Demand. Discover how to create an extraordinary life of optimal health and wellness. Visit drtomrosell.com slash education. That's drtomrosell.com slash education. If you're looking for the best in natural health, wellness, and green living products, shop the Roselle Web Store on Amazon.com. You'll find a variety of products and resources that are designed to help achieve an ultimate state of health and wellness. Shop the Roselle Web Store on Amazon.com today. Visit DrTomRoselle.com and click on Roselle Web Store. That's DrTomRoselle.com and click on Roselle Web Store. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live every Sunday at 12 noon. Give us a call at 888 Don't touch your dial and make sure that you look to see exactly what you're looking at. Because I say that because we have several stations now that are linked into the family. And we're trying to give you the most intimate and up-to-date information. Listen, you know what my job is? My job is to trigger, I didn't know that in your brain. I don't believe that. See, you're not supposed to believe me or anybody else. You're supposed to go out and do your own homework. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to aggravate you. I'm supposed to tweak you. I'm supposed to get you incited. So said, how can that be? And you do your own studies, and you can prove me wrong. And that's how you get a hold of me, too, and say, you know, you're wrong, Doc. DrTomRoselle.com. My guest in studio, your host this Wednesday, or this Tuesday evening. I keep doing that. Tuesday evening, the 21st, 7.30 p.m., Dr. Stephanie Pina. She will be your presenter on herbal medicine at the Rizal Center for Healing in Fairfax, Virginia. We're right on 50 and Prosperity, so it's like an easy shot off the beltway. You can get there. It's less than a third of a mile. Register, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. That's how you register for that class. We're going to take one more call, and then we're going to do a couple other things. Louise from Westminster, how can I help you? Yes, I'm calling about vitamin D. Um, I was taking... A thousand I use of D3 a day, and a couple of years ago I decided when they did blood work that I'd ask them to check for vitamin D. Yep. The value says 94, but below that it says toxicity is 100 mg-ml. I don't know what that means. Yeah, it's over, it's over 100. Um, the, is that the, true? Yeah. The, the normal levels are between, uh, laboratory levels are between 30 and 100, uh-huh. but here's the truth of it. Anything 50 or less is considered insufficient. 32 or less is very, very deficient. So if you're maintaining that level at 1,000 milligrams a day, you're doing really well, and I'm surprised that you're doing it just with 1,000 milligrams. Well, uh, my question th- it's was, not even 1,000 milligrams. you got me saying it's 1,000 IU. So 
So how do I know if I go over it? Do I continue to do a thousand milligrams a day? Yeah, if you're sitting there, and you've been doing it for a long time. It's not going to bother you. And at well, that I, level, I, I stopped. No, I, I wouldn't. I would. Well, if you stop, go get another blood test. Find out what it is. They're inexpensive, uh-huh. and you know, see what your levels are. And you can send me a note. Just go online, go to drtomrozell.com, and I'll tell you where you should be. I have patients. I take anywhere from six to ten thousand units a day. And I do that to keep my immune system going and so forth. Obviously, I'm a crazy man and I'm all kinds of stress. But, Louise, you're, you're in great shape if that's what the numbers really are. Mm-hmm. And uh, just get in touch with me. Listen, we're coming up. I've got to finish up with Dr. Pina. Thank, okay. Thank you for calling. Thank Appreciate you. It. Dr. Pina, th- Tuesday evening, you're going to have a whole bushel basket worth of information in about 30 seconds. Tell us what you're going to do. We're going to talk about herbs. Uh, we're going to talk about what parts of the plant are the medicinal parts, what parts uh, you can, we're going to see commonly over the shelves that are available to you. Uh, certain herbs aren't as available, but we want to talk about what's safe and healthy for you and how's the best way to effectively use them. So if you want to get off your stuff, 703-698-7117. That's how you register for that class. And don't forget, October the 19th, Ageless Health. 2013, the three keys to health and wellness. That's the day that you also have to remember. We'll see you next week at the same old time, same old place. Make sure you're here because we'll have more data. And please call us with any question that you may have. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care. And you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's Mm bestinsmile.com. Thank you.